This is the Military and Aerospace Electronics Report. I'm John Keller. Well, there's suddenly a lot of exciting work going on in unmanned underwater vehicles, or UUVs for short. One of the most influential research organizations pushing UUV technology is the Office of Naval Research, or ONR, in Arlington, Virginia. Now, just last month, ONR scientists revealed an $18 million contract with Lintec Incorporated in College Station, Texas, to develop a prototype propulsion and power system for a future long-endurance UUV. Now, the U.S. Navy is keen on developing these kinds of long-endurance UUVs for covert reconnaissance of shipping activity and potentially hostile coastal waters and harbors. Now, while today's UUV technology could conduct these kinds of secret undersea spy missions for maybe a couple of days, the Navy is pushing industry to develop unmanned submersibles that could operate autonomously in enemy waters for weeks, maybe even months. Now, to do that, there's no known battery technology that could power a long-endurance UUV reliably. So, it's up to scientists at Lintec and others like them to come up with undersea power and propulsion technology that's stealthy, reliable, and works for a very long time. Now, one of the areas that Lintec researchers are looking at is long-endurance hydride peroxide fuel cell UUV energy systems, which is sort of like an alkaline fuel cell and is fueled by sodium or potassium bor borohydride with hydrogen peroxide. Now, the good news here is this is a hydride peroxide fuel cell that might operate longer and less expensively than traditional fuel cell technology, but the bad news is this approach can produce hydrogen as a byproduct, and if you've seen those old newsreels of the Hindenburg disaster, well, you know how dangerously explosive that can be. Now, this isn't the only long-endurance UUV power and propulsion technology that ONR is working on. Some of the marquee unmanned submersible programs ONR ha has in the pipeline is the Large Displacement Unmanned Underwater Vehicle, or LDUUV, program. Now, this is a project that aims to develop a large unmanned submarine that can operate in the open ocean and in coastal waters and harbors on missions lasting more than 70 days. Now, a little more than a month ago, ONR awarded a $5.9 million dollar three-year research contract to Hydroid Incorporated in Pocasset, Massachusetts to develop an autonomy testing system for the LDUUV Innovative Naval Prototype Technology Program. This is to develop machine autonomy and long-endurance propulsion systems for future large UUVs. So, the technology necessary to build large, long-endurance UUVs isn't here yet, but ONR is setting the table for these new kinds of unmanned underwater systems we might see fielded, perhaps before the end of this decade. Now, there's plenty going on in traditional UUV technology, too. In April, the Navy and General Dynamics introduced a quarter-scale model of the surface mine countermeasure unmanned undersea vehicle named Knifefish at the Navy League show in Washington. Now, the future knife fish is to be a heavyweight mine-hunting UUV for the literal combat ship, Mine Countermea Countermeasures Mission Package. In February, the Navy awarded a contract to the Lockheed Martin Maritime Systems and Sensor Segment in Syracuse, New York, and its partner, Atlas Electronic GmbH in Bremen, Germany, for the shipboard mine neutralization system, Seafox, which uses sonar and video sensors to detect, locate, and destroy enemy sea mines. And just last week, UUV maker Bluefin Robotics in Quincy, Massachusetts, got a contract from a pretty famous undersea survey company named Phoenix International Holdings Incorporated in Largo, Maryland, for one of the company's Bluefin 21 deep dive UA UUVs. Now, if you don't know Phoenix International by its name, you might know the company for one of its most notable feats. Now, this is the company that found the black boxes from Air France 447, the wide-body passenger jet that crashed into the Atlantic Ocean three years ago, killing all 228 aboard. The black boxes were located about 12,000 feet beneath the Atlantic. With an endorsement like that, we can be sure that Bluefin Robotics is going places, and we can say the same about UUV technology in general. 
for the military and aerospace electronic support. I'm John Keller.